Hello, hello everybody, and welcome to the LJL OU Podcast Season 2, Episode 18. I am your host, Mars Swan, joined by my, as always, co-host for the podcast. First off, we have the gifted Nymera. Welcome, Nymera. Hey, hey, what's up? It's been a little while, huh? It's been a little, it's been a little bit. And we've got the remarkable initialize. Hello, sir. Hello, hello. Uh, officially, according to the UK, yeah, the better Hapgood. So oh, shush. Okay. Well, mm. <laughs> shocks, Viperoon. Who Viperoon does every it day. Better? Every day of the week. Viperoon every day, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I'm the power behind the throne. You have to know who I am. It's fine. A little bit, a little bit. How are you guys doing? Yeah, I'm good. I'm good. Being involved with so much random stuff in the soft season. And uh, yeah. one of the goals which I set for myself was I want to get in and spectating sk- st- uh, teams and their scrims and getting in on their content. Mm. Really trying to like get myself back into like the like the pro team mentality and stuff. And I've managed to sit in on a load of different scrims. So I'm really happy with that. I feel like I'm uh, coming right. into the season pretty hot with my game knowledge. So uh, awesome. yeah, r- pretty productive for me. Yeah, yeah. Glad he you knows. The, he knows the most the in time. ways to flame your teammates. Oh yeah, it's great. That's what he's learned. Absolute the psychopath. Base and out smart. All right. <laughs> <Yeah>. cool. <laughs> <laughs> well and truly uh, going above thank, and beyond the, the mind family. games. Oh god. Uh, I am what a name. I love that. I love those guys. They're great. Anyway, moving on. Oh, weren't they in the NSC finals? They were. Right? They won the NSC finals. Yeah. And they were yeah, in they the dual finals, but that one didn't go quite so well. No, I, I remember one of them went better than the other. I I thought I <laughs> thought I was highlighting the better one to go talk about. Um Gentlemen, we've got a, a lot to cover in this week's mm. episode of the podcast. It as it as you alluded to earlier, Nymera, uh, it's been a while, and we've got to first recap MSI because we actually haven't talked about the Rumble or the actual playoff and our eventual victor in the finals. Yeah, um, we're gonna talk about the LCK changes and potentially the implications that might have for the wider esports league realm. Uh, obviously, all the recent news that came out over the last 24, 48 hours over in the LCS um, around all those minor region changes, because LCS is a minor region, so it obviously affects LGL directly. Um, then we're going to be talking about uh, LGL OU, as you might have already heard a few slightly different changes in this what a t- introduction. What a t- and uh, there are definitely some new stuff happening. We're going to be going through a bunch of that later. And then at the end, very briefly, because this is not the episode for it, uh, but we will talk about some of our um, hopes and if we're looking forward to the summer split. But the reason that we're not going to go much further into that is because we've got a very special episode planned for everybody for next week. Uh, Nothing's going to look the same, by the way, as well. So hint. Get get used to this background and uh, this layout. Well, uh, this is it. Actually, don't get used to it, actually. That's, that's the opposite of what, what, what you need to do. Uh, yeah. Final well, countdown? Yeah, I'm down. <laughs> I'll play it. I, I mean, I've got, I can plug the keyboard in. I've got my own interface in. Let's see if we can do this. I have actually got a final countdown sound. I've probably played it. I've not played it in a while, so I'll probably get it wrong. I think it's like, is it F sharp minor? Possibly. Well, I don't know. What, we'll have, I got, what have I got on the soundboard? <laughs> oh boy, no. Oh, we've started. This is your fault, but this, I encouraged oh God, got, it. So, well, oh no, no, that's <laughs> wrong. That's that's wrong. Oh no, no, that's that's very different. Uh, uh, well, uh, uh, if you can try and find sounds while I shill out here, because everybody, ladies and gentlemen, if you are over on the YouTube, I would like you to do one thing for me and one thing alone. And that first one thing is liking, commenting, and subscribing. It's one thing. Of Actually, they're all the things. same thing. Yeah, yeah. It is, it's, it's, it it's, is. it's it's the the holy trinity of YouTube. You know, yeah. three actions, same thing. What cheat on and... Minecraft speed runs and what are the other? Yeah. Two? <laughs> um. Oh, cyber stalk people and harass them and take down their videos even though you don't own it. Hell yeah. And oh. the music industry will always take from everybody. Hell yeah. Uh, oh, yeah. <laughs> I think I not think as bad that... as Spotify will. I mean, come on, man. Ooh. That, that, I'm just saying, those are some <laughs> suspect rates for musicians. Not a fan. Uh, not a fan. I mean, I mean, I watched a very interesting video on that yesterday. Um, but if you are interested, please support us. We really do appreciate it. But if you're also an audio podcast listener, you can get this podcast on all audio streaming platforms. And if you are so keen as in to uh, maybe get a shout out from us in this little section mm-hmm. as well, review us on Apple iTunes podcasts, and we will pick our favorite review from that last week and uh, give you a quick shout out. So hello. It's a, it's a good way of interact with us. It helps. It really does. If you want more LGL content, 
give us give us some give us some sugar. <laughs> oh my. With that all said, gentlemen, I'm done with shilling for this time being. Uh I think it's get that into we it. get into this. Um Excellent. so gentlemen, as I've said, we're not doing anything till the very end to talk about summer of LJL. So let's get into MSI reactions and thoughts. And I think it makes total sense if we're looking at MSI. Obviously, our last uh, podcast episode, we covered uh, Group C. Yes, Group yep. C to absolute mm -hmm. ad nauseum. We talked about every micro thing and we were very happy with DFM's performance. And we've given our whole piece on that. We even had our small little thank you, Kazu section. <laughs> but we haven't talked about the rumble stage yet and we've not talked about the knockout stage um so gentlemen just a little quick overview obviously diamond kia royal never give up psg talent and mad lions made it out group c's cloud nine didn't and uh they even fell once to pentanet as well uh what were your thoughts on the rumble stage <sighs> i don't know sam do you want to start? i'm just doing it just doing a thing in the background so yeah so, so, so i think i think it was a bit of a mix i think RNG were finally proved that they were fallible because uh, obviously they had a very easy ride into groups where they just yeah. destroyed group stage. I mean, they had UOL and Pentanet and it was it wasn't close. Wei was running over everybody. Xiaohu was having a time of his life. You know, Gala remained crying, you know, started a good series. And then we kind of hit the rumble stage and RNG finally looked a little mortal. Like, uh, obviously, like Cloud9 may have lost to Pentanet, but they did take down RNG that one time, right? right. Um, uh, you know, there were, and there was some moments where you go... These guys definitely look a bit weaker. Mad looked better than we expected as well. I think they came in and really took it to a lot of teams, as did PSG, actually. I think that people assumed yeah. it would be kind of a two-horse race. And to an extent, it was. But these other teams, particularly once we did get out of the Rumble Steak, PSG and Mad, really, really um, stood and were counted for, right? Like They were what? pretty damn good. Um, and down one as well. Great team fighting, but very awkward early games. Yeah, I, I think what f f the big takeaways for me is that Dan Wan still has incredible individual players, but they are relying on them because they're start they're not winning through like stylistic oh. advantages. Yeah, not really. Um, but what I thought was was really impressive is that basically we 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 sh over the last couple of years we have talked so much on pro broadcast about how. Drafts will just kind of win you games and win mm -hmm. you taunts when you want, win you whatever. That wasn't the case with RNG. They were significantly outdrafted for large portions of the rumble stage and the knockout stage, and they just outplay you. Partly because yeah. they are so good at flipping fights and just saying it's kind of like the um. Remember, like what people were saying in the Chinese super server in terms of the mentality of of um a solo queue there, where they know that technically mm -hmm. they're disadvantaged in a play, but they say, look, we'll look to outplay. We're going for the fight, and just looking to outplay. And against a team from the LCK. Um, which is so used to people t choosing the correct way to play out a situation, sometimes they can get caught flat-footed because they don't expect someone to take a disadvantageous fight, and because they're not expecting it, actually, it isn't disadvantageous, and they, they use their, their kind of yeah. um, un unfitting reactions to that point. RNG were yeah. really, really good around playing, playing against people's uh, accepted sensibilities, and mm -hmm. for me, that's what really yeah. set them above a lot of the other teams um, in their uniqueness. Yeah. Uh, and not, obviously, I'm sure we'll talk about particular matchups and say the finals a little bit more in depth in a moment or two. But like specifically for RNG as well, I, I actually think they weren't that great in a straight 5v5. What they were really, really good at was in finding Rumble. a 5v5. In Rumble. Yeah, yeah. Rumble. So Way had a fabulous Rumble. He was the best no, no, Rumble. No, no, in the Rumble stage. Side. In the Rumble stage. Oh, sorry. I mean, he was also a really good Rumble. Uh, I mean, I like yes, that. But, yeah. Sorry, I'm with you. In the Rumble stage. Uh, and even in the Rumble stage, like I, I still think that, that there were moments where RNG weren't that flawless in their team fighting what i think they were really really good at though was basically picking fights the other team just wasn't ready for yeah. or getting them on like getting to see we're going and the other team wasn't wasn't like set up for it um or, or they were just like they were just had the vision control to make it so unbalanced that it wasn't a straight 5v5 plus they just had some mechanical gods like ming is a monster gala is arguably the best team fight ad carry in the world on a big yeah. stage he's a bit of an oozy character where he's okay domestically during the regular season and just turns it on the, the more important the matches they get um and i think that really really helped for them 
plus. Oh, I wouldn't say they that. Could the one, well, three, one. Era they could play the one three one. Which era of Sam? Because domestically, Uzi was a mega choker for up until about season season seven eight, right? But how many times did he make it to? Gentlemen, Worlds, let's but, keep no, this about like, MSI. Yeah, <laughs> say, and like, and I'll, and I'll Gala is not agree. Uzi. He's Gala. I don't it's agree. very yeah. different. Yeah. <laughs> um, I'll be honest, my 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 bigger disappointment uh, that I'd really like to highlight is I think the format for the Rumble specifically was possibly the worst format they could mm. have had. Um, I understand doing a round robin. I completely mm. get that for the first stage. We get the round robin, we get a bunch of games in. It's great for minor regions, right? This Everybody was really like, good for minor regions, yeah. Once we get to the sec uh, second stage, I wanted to see best of three, best of fives, really. Mo mm. re realistically, um, I think one, it would have helped someone like Cloud9. I don't think Pentanet would have got uh, their one and nine, but they would have maybe taken their game in a best of series as well. Um, and yeah. I was a bit disappointed. I think part of the reason that RNG and Down One looked a bit more flimsy is Battle because, Wars hey, you don't one. get to have that full scrim format, which is what they're used to. They don't do yeah. best of one. Adaptation, so, yeah. Yeah, yeah, I mean, I mean, I will say it hurts scheduling a bit more on that. I was about front, to say because um, I, which is, which I think the big. One. I mean, I'm yeah. living in magical yeah. Christmas land with that. Sure. Yeah, the the bit the big problem with trying to do a best of three rumble stage is we already saw how fatigued the players were coming out of the rumble stage, mm. and then having your knockout things like have the same finals like a day, two days before the finals. It's rough. It's a three week tournament mm. that includes like all your games in the group stage too. Best of three is just adds extra pressure onto that. It's better for competitive integrity i suppose in terms of like actually getting the best format together as the best teams into the bracket and wherever because yeah I, I do think i mean at the end of the day i, I do think the right teams made the knockout i, I think we yeah. got the right teams um i think that cloud nine on performance yeah on perform on performance in, in, in the rumble stage yeah on the best but, of one performance yeah yeah i, I, I even yeah, the best uh, i think psg were I, fabulous mm, for rng I uh, they know, pushed because... him really hard in a lot well, of those no, games. Well, from from the Rumble stage, we know that PSG... Well, well I mean, for, it was a decision between, between Mad and Cloud9, not PSG and Cloud9. Uh, PSG yeah, showed yeah. themselves a couple yeah, of yeah, yeah, yeah. So I think... Yeah, but I think that... Um, in terms of the knockout result, I still think we got, yeah, like, the quote-unquote correct um, teams in the, in the bracket. But mm. it, I don't think it's healthy for the players to have a double round robin best of three um, format. I, no, I, I don't think you do double. I think you is just a single do one best round three. robin... Best then, of five. No, no, no. You get the full best of five. You let every you, you five don't. I don't think you do other. best of five group stage. That rarely happens anywhere. Um, what you could do okay. is best. Best what of you, three then. Maybe what you could do is go back to more like your own OGN champions like 2014 format where you have best of two. Yeah. Uh, best of two group stage actually. Yeah. Best of two group stage. And you you play you that. play two games one on each side or or side choice once once per thing and then you you play it like that. And again, like I'm a massive fan of 2014 careers formats. I think they were really in innovative. Um, so maybe there's a world where you can do that and actually just do best of best of twos, mm. um, which I know it's not great. It, the problem is then mm, in a lot, and normally that works when you've got like three team, four team groups or something like that. When you've got it like that, anyway, yeah. I think be best of one is is always a bit awkward at this level. Um, I, I do think be. that the format is something which maybe gets revisited in the future. I yeah. think that I mean, groups. I, mean, I, I, I don't. Like, yeah, go on. For all that I agree with you guys. I, I, I'm to put that out that I generally do. I think best of two, for example, I think could be a really interesting option in some ways because it's like you get the double round Anything robin isn't best in one. a single <laughs> match anyway, right? Yes. Um, so like potentially an option. But then I'll also say there is something to best of ones in that it's such a different no. um, skill set, and it, is it worth testing both? But those we've already skills had sets? we've already had the best of one. For, for, but, my... but, but my point is, but that's for basically players. That's what group stage was. Mm. Yeah, but that, uh, that's that's why I don't want to keep doing because the best I, of ones. Because in some I ways, I'll be honest: fatigue of viewing the games when you're watching best of one after best of one. It's I think. Well, I, I mean, think I, this this to argue this marred by the fact that, that this, this 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 is marred by the fact that quadruple best around best of um best well, of one for round robin a. for group A mm. fucking mm. awful. Like yeah, I didn't want to see that many pentanet games. It's fantastic for pentanet. Best format for the minor regions, right? I think that. I think that I, I'm glad we see um, like major got region to play first 18 teams. games in total. Like, exactly. How insane exactly. Is that? Um, but the thing is, like, oh, yeah. I mean, if you have, but if, but if you have Garm in that group coming from VCS, that is a much more interesting group. The Rumble stage is much more interesting because they definitely yep. get in over Pantana and UOL. They definitely do. Yeah. Um, I, I think that the, you almost have to put an asterisk next to that because obviously, in just in terms of like your instinctual kind of feelings come out of that, you're just thinking, oh, I was a bit shit. 
Um, because you have yeah. to see Pentanet getting stomped because Rumble took the wrong runes and and didn't end up taking because they were just so tilted and had to play so many games, right? Yeah. Um, well, well, exactly. I mean, like, uh, and f that's unfortunate. But I'll also say, you know, like, yeah, that is really unfortunate. And, and again, it's one of those ones where, like, it's just, like, do I really want to see RNG pub stomp everybody? Maybe RNG fans potentially do. Uh, maybe we'll see for Pentanet fans as well. Like, it was great for them to, to see some more of that. Okay, put it, um, put it this way. But it was a lot of action. But, but, but all I'm saying is, for the Rumble stage specifically, I still don't, like, I, I agree. I think I would rather see a best of format in that one. But I still think there's some benefit to having best of ones, especially because it means you get to see matchups between, um, like, say damn one and rng or the, you still the get top that. well you, you wouldn't yeah. get a best of one format on that one you don't get that one in the group stage because they're not in the same groups for good no, reason but, but then the point is in the, in the rumble stage more games yeah, um, if anything the way that we're talking about it yeah exactly and that's the reason i agree with you but there is some strength to doing that in that it also tests how good you are in a best of one format when not every league is in a best of three format which does inevitably favor them Whereas if you have a mix of best of and not best of series, it's a little bit more favorable between the different systems across the world. I, I wonder... Using, I, which I, is an argu yeah. I mean, those, those are some of the arguments that, like, say, might like, have Okay, put it this, this way. I wouldn't mind having a best of one rumble stage and then just have the double round robin if we had a double bracket in the, in the playoffs. Just three best... It's only three best of fives, guys. Semifinals into finals. If we had a, yeah, if we had a lower bracket well. and then you had basically, you know, upper bracket, lower bracket going to a true finals... I, w I wouldn't mind that, actually. You could do a true large extended tournament bracket. I think yeah, that's a I very... Th I, I think th the problem is they want to keep it to a three-week tournament, which because it's between yeah. the splits, there's no off-season after it. Well, there is an off-season, but it's smaller. I, the, it, the problem it's is the they're, working, thing... they're working with a time window, which is just very slim. Um, yeah. I mean, if they, get a, if they just combine stage two and three, that's an option. But actually talking about mm -hmm. best ofs and everything else, let's actually go on to the knockout stage, gentlemen. Yeah, I've got, I've got uh, them on screen. I've had them on screen. Yeah, um, so actually, let's talk about them. So uh, RNG versus PSG was the game that everyone thought at one point was going to be kind of a stomp, but then actually showed it could have gone for the full five games. Uh, mm. Samuel, I'm just talking about what the online analysts were saying and the actual broadcast. I'm not quoting you, sir. Um, but uh, there was a lot of opinions that RNG are going to come in and absolutely stomp. Uh, they did win 3-1. PSG it was definitely a close showed. One, actually. It was. Mm. They definitely showed that they weren't going to roll over. Um, mm. But they they did also see. We did actually get glimpses of why RNG are the be one of the best teams. But it's at the same time not maybe the best team out of China, even though they did uh, uh, do I, rather well. I, I have to say. The fact that fact. LPL is getting four slots for Worlds is terrifying because all of them are Worlds competitors. Like all, le legit, all of them. There yeah. are like four or five teams in 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 oh, the in the LPL FPS, that could. Well, I, yeah, well, I wouldn't even. I, would, I wouldn't even say top is like in 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 the top four right now, right? No, because I mean, right now you've got because you've got you've got RNG, they, they top got RNG, FPX, EDG. EDG. Um, and no, then IG, IG are up there too, right? Oh, wait, yeah, no, they just IG up there. Oh, sorry, I didn't, I didn't like follow the bracket because there were so many series and we managed to catch all of them. JDG, so like, yeah, their chance as well, actually. Yeah, no, but yeah. anyway, so like, anyway, top end of LPL is disgustingly strong. All of them are going to be potential finalists this world. Anyway, so I think what my take on the bracket is, is that, um, because I, I do actually agree with Sam, because I know Sam's saying that RNG struggled in, in like full on 5v5s. I would agree with that for the Rumble stage. Going into the bracket, but coming into this series versus PSG, I'd say effectively they won because they out-team four. Um, I think that they were really good at drafting for the eventual comeback in, in the mid to late game. Uh, and I, I do yeah. think particularly that, you know, Xiaohu just did did a number on people, right? Xiaohu and Wei are just a really strong top side. Yeah. And and I think that, I, I actually think, I mean, we'll come on to like tournament MVP as it comes in later, but I think that Ming was really robbed. Ming had yeah. such, such a good a tournament. Guys, disgustingly mm -hmm. good. Support diff yeah. is so important at a pro level as well. Because if yeah, you manage to, I mean, like, if you manage to wrangle over bot lane wave control and get the first reset, you then have to then the enemy supports playing a guessing game of where you turn up, and Ming just uses that so so well, so well. Yeah, I mean, I mean, when I so I obviously did uh, a couple a number of articles, of articles yeah. for this, for so I, obviously I do analytical journalistic work basically for my my day job, um, and I did a couple of pieces on this, and I was basically saying, look, you have probably got the best support jungle duos in terms of performance this tournament in this game. In um, obviously for for PSG you had Kai Wing and River, River, where they were both really really good. And honestly, Kai Wing was way better in lane than Ming was for most of the tournament. Like he was dumb. For most uh, of them, yeah. and Ming was better. Than, and, and even in this and even in this series, I actually think largely Kai Wing was probably better in lane than Ming. Ming is just a better like team fight support at this point. Uh, and then you also have River and Wei who are back, probably the best Rumble players in the tournament, which was super mm. key considering people weren't very good mechanically on the champion to begin with. Whereas these guys were just like ducks to water with it. 
Um, let's let's not spend which, ages on the individual series. Yeah, exactly. Just because, yeah, well, this is just kind but of like, our reaction. But, but yeah. absolutely. But my, my point being, that I thought it was a really interesting matchup because I expected it yes. to be kind of like, okay, could RNG get Xiaohu rolling and could PSG get yeah. Maple rolling? And I actually think Maple had an unfortunately quiet series, and I yeah, think Quine stepped up a bit this one, and that was a really big deal come finals as well. Um, and I think both Doggo and Gala had great series. Mm. I think Xiaohu did get a number a little bit over Hanabi, generally speaking. Mm. And I'm quite sad, honestly, that Game Four. Uh, PSG couldn't close it out because yeah. I would have loved to have seen a fifth game of that series. Yeah, that was the saddest one for me as well, game number four. But hey, what do you think about it, Nymera? I think that um, we saw that PSG could get early leads versus RNG, and that's actually quite scary coming into mm -hmm. World 2 because if you have... If you can then kind of start formulating um, plans based on what PSG are doing, because I know I know that like this region has ridiculously good coaches and they managed to pull numbers over like the peak Korean teams in in season five and six. Uh, you know, Flash Wolves, obviously, right? Um, mm -hmm. There is a chance that coming into Worlds that they come in with their they, they've kind of had this arms race over summer to stack up all of their secret plans, come into Worlds and uh, pull one over on them. I, I do think that this this is this. It, it, while it was a 3-1, given the amount of early leads that PSG had, it felt more like a 3-2. But RNG just showed mm. that they, they had shaped up their team fighting for, for the knockout yeah. stage. Um, they, yeah, On they the other side of the bracket, gentlemen, we've got to talk about Damwon Kia and Mad Lions going the full five games. Mm. The fact that Mad Lions and EU were on the precipice of being 2-1 up against the world champions. Yeah. And then Damwon Kia showed why they are Damwon Kia and they are just the best fucking team sometimes in the world. Two and Showmaker looked pissed. Yeah. Two, two things that were really big in this series for me. Um, Humanoid had a bit of a quiet series comparative to what we yes, wanted from him because I actually think that if Humanoid is on a couple of bad Illusion games and not being stuck on Victor a bit more, that was... That I, I that's how I would have seen Mad doing better, and I, I know I so I was sat mm. um sat in the VCS Discord, and some people shared the opinions like, yeah, if they play more Silas and Lucian, maybe, maybe that stylistically fits them better. Yeah. Other thing is that Kazi giveth, Kazi taketh away, because he way. had some yeah. awful games mm -hmm. in he had the, in their first loss, really bad game from Kazi, and then obviously the Zaya yeah. game, disgustingly good. Uh, I thought yeah. that in the Rumble yeah. stage, when Mad were losing to Dan One, for me, it did look like Kazi didn't know where to position and didn't know where to be on the map. That was my take on the situation. But then coming into the series, I was worried that Kazi was going to be like, I was like, oh man, Kazi really, Mad really don't look good when Kazi's not really online. And then he has like the huge Zyphons, like, cool, mm -hmm. reverse curse, I'll take it. <laughs> yeah, I mean, like, also on the other side, Beryl had yeah. a shocker of a series. I like, get a shocker of a tournament, honestly. Like, yeah. He was really that was the big, off big thing for me. Uh, and, and like obviously Beryl's never been a huge KDA player. He's always been looking for for fights. Is what he does. The Genshin but, player. Like he is indeed. He's a big white. He, he is the waifu hunter. Um. <laughs> um. Continue um, with that sentence. Go on. <laughs> No, honestly, um, I want to see if you're going to do this. Well, that, well, that was the end of the sentence. <laughs> that was the end of the sentence. That was the end of the sentence. Um, of everything. That's the yeah. next document. Okay. Yeah, so move, moving on. on no, no, that's that barrel. Uh, but like, I mean, like, <laughs> sort of like his Nautilus was really off that series mm. in particular, like very poor. Um, he just like, I think both the losses actually were on Nautilus, which was really, really off. And he was dying in a lane a lot as well. Oh, I the think... two twos were bad this tournament. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah. And yeah, they were. And, and, and like, I don't think Ghost was bad, and I don't think it's easy to look good when Beryl wasn't looking fantastic Ghost early was on. Ghost really good in the Rumble stage. Really I genuinely yeah. think Rumble stage, Canyon had a really off portion of the tournament. Mm -hmm. I think some, yeah. some of the other junglers had some good best of one plans against them, but Ghost and Showmaker were really stepping the fuck up. Like, I think Ghost did really yeah, on the I Rumble stage. Fair. Same can't be said in this in this series, though. I, again, I, I don't Sam, think he was... The Varus I, I, Blast I, I, Cone... Yeah, like there were a couple I mean, of was... moments like that. That was not an isolated. Yeah, I was. I mean, like, had some uh, yeah, big like, off I think, I think. I think. Like, I think he had okay team fighting this series. Like, yeah, he did. He, he was fine. Like again, he, I don't think. He, I, well, I put it this way. I don't think he was the problem in most of the games. I think that was more Beryl and like. Yeah. I, I think Khan had a very up and down seed, but he had a very up and down tournament seed finals. Um. Yeah, I, mean, this, I think this... Matt will be a bit upset, basically, that Canyon and Showmaker broke some skulls in games yeah. four and five. And, you know, and it turns out Canyon can play Rumble, which people weren't necessarily expecting because he was quite bad in the Rumble stage. And, well, uh, well, what they also did on was... post that stage. Well, I mean, I mean, there was the game with the Yone, right, where actually they finally had some AOECC 
to layer up with the, the equalizer, and I don't get why people are just randomly throwing the rumble ults into the void. Like it's it's you can use it as soft engage, but in the current iteration, it's not Leandri's. It's not where you're yeah, going for like bad. huge burn over time. It's more for you need to keep someone in it. It's not like the one tick and then everything, all the DOTs start ticking on. You need to pin people in it. You need to. Um, and they just didn't really do that well in the earlier stages of the tournament. In that game, though, with the, with the Yone, they finally found a comp where it was more effective, though. I'll be real. This was where I really started to feel like damn one Kia. When they were starting to get pushed by maybe teams just as good as them, Nuguri and Khan, the differences between yeah. these two players and the adaptation and everything. He could just, it's yeah. just not Nuguri would just occasionally same. just gap people. He'd just occasionally gap right. people and went, went off of his own advantages, even but though not the comp. Just that, it's just also he knew how to help the rest of the team, right? He knew how to solve those I, problems. I and would... I don't think Khan's quite there yet. We've still I... got summer, and I, I am yeah. very hopeful come summer he'll have a chance. Yeah. I kind of get what you mean in terms of like Nuguri will kind of drag he would kind of like drag the team up with a scruff of the neck in terms of helping them out but i would say mm. that nugger was better at winning through just finding ways to just get stupid individual advantages just by being better khan for me was more of the utility player for his team and being like the exact the Scion. same as what armut has done for the mad lions i would argue yeah occasionally he just gaps if you look people. at the lec yeah, yeah he just gaps yeah. people um <clears throat> through well he gaps people in team fights particularly yeah, yeah. So, like, khan so, was doing he's not a great lane so, khan he's was doing really that Khan was all, actually one of the best players of all time at doing that in Season 7. Season yeah. 7 domestically, Dragon X yeah. were disgustingly good about playing through individual advantages top, through his <clears> gang, <throat> playing through Nara and all this other stuff. Like, no one no one could deal with them. And then you came He's to, still you came one to the one of the side. best gang playing yeah. of all time. And, like, yeah. and, I, and, I, and I'd also say, actually, I think... Uh, we'll get onto this in the final, but I actually think Khan... Right. Well, because I actually That's think right. Khan was one of the win conditions, honestly, for for Dan one in the finals, and they got him for right picks. Sin is this Lee Sin is dumb. Incredible. His gangplank is dumb. Is well, let's go over onto the finals and actually <clears throat> yeah. do that, then, gentlemen, because yeah, Khan showed up that yeah, get Lane Lane Lee Sin versus Yahoo, a very respectably good top laner. Um, one it's legit, and you can do you can do anything and everything if your creativity and imagination is allowed to run free. Who knows what you can do? Even yep. though G Bay just said that creativity is a Western thing and not a, I, I'm yep. not sure anymore. Yeah. Anyway, all I'm gonna do is uh, say I told you so and post the article I posted. It was basically what happened in the finals. Um. Fair play. Fair play. Fair play. <laughs> um. So basically, so like, I, so, I, so I've got. So yeah, I told you so, ladies and gents. Uh. I've even got it in writing. Uh. With a type, <laughs> with a timestamp and everything. Yeah. But yeah, I mean, this was basically it. Um. I will say Khan surprised me in some ways, basically, because my, my issue is I don't think Khan is a bad player. I think he can play carries pretty damn well. He needs actually. the right champion. That's what we're But, but yeah, I, I, yeah, and I think part of that is meta. I think part of it as well, I just don't think Canyon plays around Khan very well at all. Like, the synergy between the jungler and the top for, for down one is just not there. Uh, whereas it's very much there for RNG. Because again, I, I, my read on Xiaohu, and I think a lot of analysts tend to agree with me on this one is that he is really really good if you give him resources and then he can run away with that but he's not necessarily the guy who will win you in a 1v win you a main a game from a 1v1 he is someone who says okay jungler okay support roam to me get me a couple kills and then i will destroy okay non isolated um, 1v1 he, but the thing is though, yes. like what what really impresses me about rng is that you know they're going top they always yeah. do and there's mm -hmm. nothing you can do about it. Like the thing yeah. is, I'm the thing is that they're so good. Again, and a lot of this for me comes from Ming. Uh, um, you know, being very good in lane, setting the map up well, getting the first roam, playing this kind of fog of war game with the enemy sport and the enemy team, just being like, all right, I'm call my bluff, see where I turn up. Um, yep. Turning up top lane and winning fights there, and they're so proficient at this. And they've, you know, it kind of reminds me of. Do you remember? Was it? Was it season six TSM where they had, that was the double lift era where they had like, but they only played one style. And one of the problems was that then they're like, when that style kind of fell out, they didn't really know what to do. Um, but they were yeah. very honed at that one style. And then season seven, they kind of had the opposite problem. They tried to yeah. do too much and then they couldn't focus on any one style, right? RNG yeah. right now are a team which plays that one style super well in terms of that, that the, the mechanics they use to, to get top ahead. 
are so so irresistible that even though you know it's coming, there are very few things you can do about it. That's what impressed me. I, well, the we fact saw that, that Wayne was I mean, allowed to have Udia all five games was just mm. fucking hilarious to me. Yeah, I was just yeah. like, you can't, you yeah. can't keep letting them having the, the the double scuttle. Like you can't keep letting this man do this over and yeah, over. Man. And then it's like, like I'm watching Dam on Kira. I'm like, you got one of the best coaches, K Comas. Slap him! Yeah, the, the goat coach. The I mean, like, coach. I mean, like, I, 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 I will also. I don't think Canyon had a bad series. I think he was. No, fine. that's no flame on them. It's yeah, the flame on the pick and ban yeah. phase. Like, like, and again, I'll also say, I, I possibly disagree with Nightmare a little bit about them going top all the time. So I actually think RNG proved this, this, this kind of tournament as well that they're capable of playing through bot when they have to as well. In, yeah. Just in the sense that actually. Not that they will necessarily look to put ganks down there, but if anybody ever dares try to catch Gala out, you will see three teleports come through. There'll be a Tom Kenshaw and a and double teleports, and people just come out the woodwork, and then they'll look for a fight bot lane, we and then that's the how they win. Man bot yeah. lane at five minutes. For them. Right, like that happened in this series as well. So oh, like, yeah. while I agree, while I agree, there is a lot of roaming top, and they tend to put a lot of jungler attention top, and I think that. For damn one as well they're less practiced with that i mean basically it's okay if you do like games does help yeah exactly well exactly but i mean like if, but if you also like you know if you give khan lee sin he's really good at the champion it makes things a bit easier in the 2v2 because lee sin's <laughs> great at that point also i think um, the other thing for that is that um if you move out from top lane and try and make plays and you flub them mm -hmm. lee sin left alone in the lane compared to Sion does so much more damage so much more damage yeah. and the individual he's, he's that, giving, giving, giving them the extra wave the extra plate means a lot more mm -hmm with the Lee Sin than it does with with, with your yeah. Sion, which is, as much as uh, Khan is a good mechanically Sion player, it looked like Damwon didn't really know what to do with a weaponized Sion. Um, yeah, exactly that. Uh, whereas, whereas I, I, again, I trust I trust RNG with any weaponized top. We saw that even with their Gragas, right? Mm -hmm. Like, yeah, yeah. Zarek had some... 27 minute yep. stomp. Like, and, 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 that, that, there was, there was, was it game was. one, the, the, the holy shit moment from Captain Flowers, with yes. the, the full AP Gragas just one shot was like, oh yeah, that, that that's what the champion does, by the way. Yes. Uh, yeah, season three I mean, flashbacks. Like, like, I'll offer two final things as well, just in terms of serious props to crying. Um, mm -hmm. People have basically written off the mid jungle 2v2 for RNG, saying, yeah, Showmaker's going to ruin your day. And actually, largely, that didn't happen. Showmaker didn't really get to run over much in this no, series. No, not he massive. had moments. But like, say, like there was obviously when you saw Showmaker pick up the Akali into the Lucian, not the easiest matchup for Akali no, for right. sure. But even then, Cryant got serious advantages and made it work. Yeah, I, think it's, so uh, I instance, mean, like later yeah, in the so, lanes, it so got he, harder. But yeah, so uh, things are like um, just by the not notoriety of some players, like specific champion picks, like Fakus LeBlanc or mm. I don't know Westor's Fizz. Showmaker's Akali is something which I assume is just better in well, Showmaker in general is better in lane than pretty much every mid laner besides like Chovy in terms of picking up CS. Now, Akali is a difficult matchup into Lucian, but it's not unplayable. Particularly at level 3, when you get your Shroud, when you get your E, you can outplay because you can play around. Yeah. yeah, you can. Yeah, th there is like a very sp slim window of opportunity where you can get out of Lucian's Q with your E if you time it right. And and like obviously, you can okay. trade through a couple of your passives at level 3 too with your, sh with your Shroud. So you can you can actually mm. get um, Lucian down a decent amount. Um, he went down 30 CS. The average at a pro level is like 11 CS down for an Akali, which is manageable. 30 CS down though gets rough. He still managed to come into the game, but he was so yeah. blunt and compared to what I would normally expect. Uh, yeah, Showmaker did have a rough individual series in that metric for me. He wasn't as strong in the 1v1 laning situation than I would have expected mm. um, into, the, you know, the relative weak point of Cryon for RNG. Cryon actually had a really good series compared to what mm. I expected. Yeah, and that it, does come, it comes back to the fact of when you're doing one best of five series, how much weight and equity do you actually want to put in a performance in a one best of five series? Best of five, I think, is, is decent. I think because no, at least no, no, you get, no, no. Yeah. But if it's only one best of five and you've seen two different ones, you've got 10 games in total, True. how much equity do you want to put in? And, and obviously the wider thing and meta changes and everything. But uh, on, at the end of the day, RNG were victorious and they, they prevailed at the end. 27 minutes at the last game, they felt very in control yeah. of that fifth game as well, and they took it. Gentlemen, what were your ultimate, like, kind of two, like, one to two minute, like, kind of reaction to RNG winning?
I think that for me, the big takeaway for me from this tournament is actually there is no one correct way to play right now. I think that you can make multiple styles work mm -hmm. and it's more about your execute. It's much more about execution than philosophy right now. It's a really big thing for DFM because I know that DFMs were saying that their big takeaway from this tournament was we can actually make this work at an international level. Really interested to see how teams go away and start um, trying to form their own style rather than stealing from others. Um? I think I tend to agree. I think it also cements for me that uh, basically Dan Wan need to work on certain elements of how they play the game. They are a phenomenal team fighting team, but they have flaws in that, you know, they don't play around top lane especially well. You can take it to them early if you're good enough. And I think it also proves to me generally from the Rumble stage, teams like MAD, like PSG are legitimate threats. And yes, the LPL looks terrifying. Yes, RNG looks terrifying. But they got pushed in basically all of their best of fives. Yeah. And yes, I probably think the LP LPL is the strongest region in the world right now. Is, is the gap but they closing? aren't that... But they, I don't think they're that far ahead in some ways. Potentially. With the right teams. Potentially. And for me... Eh... I actually kind of thought that um, a lot of teams are actually far closer than everybody else thinks and gives credit for. I yeah. think EU's top two are probably top two, top three teams are all not far off of... Well, we saw. Uh, if Mad Lions were pushing down one to a uh, full best of five, I don't think Rogue, I don't think G2 are very far off of doing that, if not maybe yeah. even prevailing mm -hmm. in the right environment. I think PSG has shown that minor regions, especially historically better ones, um, can definitely push very good teams to the absolute limit and now we are potentially seeing psg and there's one other team that apparently are as good as psg it's um what doggo's team was uh anyone want to help me out here uh, depends if uh miles davidson because uh, uh, i know he beyond was gaming there. apparently oh, yeah was... doggo had a phenomenal tournament he was stand in um, Yes, exactly. Right. So I'm like, PSG is clearly showing um, that their region is definitely showing talent. And man, we miss not having the VCS here. Like yeah. the VCS here would have really helped emphasize this whole point. But yeah. I was really impressed with the level of play, hopefully. And this is only a start of things to come because obviously we know MSI is only the halfway point. Now we're going to be doing the narrative that everywhere else does of. Yeah. Now we look towards Worlds. Now we get to see the best of the best of the best. And uh, if when CS how... are back and they get to play AP junglers, it's going to be a really Artists. fun world for them. <laughs> <laughs> if if, 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 Ga if Gaum were at this tournament and they get to play their Carthuses, their, their everything else, it's, uh, they, they would have made the waves, I think. Shame. Shame, shame, shame. Gentlemen, uh, let's talk about some LCK changes, as uh, that's something that's happened over the last yeah. uh, week or so that that, or that announcement came out. And let's actually kind of discuss what that's going to mean for the screen. wider figure. Um, so I'm going to quickly talk over those graphics that we've got on screen for our lovely audio listeners out there. Uh, once the tweet actually loads for me, thank you, Twitter. <laughs> Just it's just infinitely loading for me. Um, but obviously, basically, the idea is that LCK is now going to a much wider scope and field for teams as it is. You can have a max of one manager, uh, one head coach, but you can have absolute um, a minimum of two, or a maximum of two. You could must have a minimum of two coaches, but you can have up to seven of them. And in one team, that is one LCK team, you must have a minimum of five, it's minimum six. six so you have your five, seven, you, eight, five nine, with an extra, 10, extra yeah so you have to have a minimum of 11 that's the idea that your half of those are also going to be playing in the academy team but you can yeah. swap them around and you can have a maximum of 20 players playing on one lck team but the idea is that they are also cycling around between academy as well or l no ck the challenger yeah. career um now, the important difference is uh, you submit a roster. You can only play with that roster that you have submitted for the first two weeks. Then, come week number three, you can switch it around. But then you can't interchange it week in, week out. If you think things aren't working, you have to give someone an actual decent shot. And playoffs, you're locked for all of playoffs. You don't get to change it once you've announced uh, who your team is. This is an indirect buff to SKT, so they can't fuck about the roster every series. <laughs> Legit. 
because so you're you, happy so, about this, right? I'm so happy with that. Maybe it means that they actually play Faker. Okay, yeah, no, I mean, uh, so. Uh, so <laughs> Sardis uh, makes a very good point. Almost as big as football teams. This is actually very reminiscent of your 2014 and, and previous OGN champions kind of thing, where you had mm. two sister teams under one org. Um, and mm. you could they, and in between seasons, you'd often see them around. Right. But it's more, yeah, Ali, Samsung, Samsung Blue, Ozone, or and then 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 Wyatt, and then SK T1S and T1K. Sure. Um, and all the other ones. Incredible Miracle number one, number two, and the other ones, which I can't remember. Yes, it was an incredible miracle when they won a game. Uh, they actually beat they Samsung Blue. Sam. I know. There was that one game with a crazy game. In it was oh, like an man. Alienware team that had like 20 Nargin, players yeah, on at right, one point yeah. as well. Yeah, I mean, like, what I will Nargin, say is the big difference Gina. between this particular system and the sister teams is obviously the sister teams could What's have that? two teams competing at the same level of competition at the same time. You mm. could have white and blue in the same in The, same the team kill matches were so Yeah, fun. exactly. Which were great, or, or, or T1S versus T1K, Rolster versus Bullets, all those kind of jazz. Whereas this one is still only five players that can be on the rift at one time, right? And who can be competing. And that does mean potentially, while this is a great opportunity to grow players, to offer opportunities to bring up players and give them a go, there is every world where this just ends up with a absolute carousel of players dropping in and out, no one getting free time, players who just have a bad week dropping out and then losing all their confidence and not getting back into the roster. So basically, my worry is for teams that are middle of the, middle of the table or lower, there is a world where basically they just keep switching rosters to try and find a combination that works because that's something you can do to be seen to be doing something. Yeah, um, well, there is the grapevine that always talks about how all these Korean teams, they have their academy team and then they have like 10 to 15 players trainees, just yeah. on a tra payroll well, training SKT have, kind of thing. As far as I'm aware, SKT have four rosters. Um, right? So they've and got, that's like, not including they've, they've got, all those rosters They've got, they've got T1, well, right? T1 challengers, T1 academy, T T1 rookies. Like they've got mm. four levels. One which is like basically too young to have a professional full time contract, but basically they're in in the system. The one below academy, and which which is where like people like Berserker and um uh it was who, guy... um LS was um scrimming against stuff, wasn't it? Was yeah, like, so yeah, so academy was so like so when 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 LS and his team are like beating these guys from T one, wow, is this T one's challenger roster? Like no, they're actually like actually a rung below the challenger roster too. Um. But yeah, like a lot of their rosters, uh, rosters have come from there. I, also, I was like, I was slightly wrong because I was like, it's a, in terms of like SKT not being able to pull off the revolving door. So the main roster is minimum six. You can only have one per. So if you have the minimum, you still have one person check, um, checking in and out. But you can have a maximum of ten. So you can actually have like two full rosters on any game day and change between them. Um, mm. But yeah, it's basically a maximum yeah, of ten right. for both of your rosters. Is that the main team needs to have the one extra guy, uh, just That's... in case of emergency substitutions and stuff like that. Anyway, yeah, the, yeah, the yeah. fact that they can't be like caught, like you, you can only change about every two weeks. I think that does help, and it's kind of like putting it on rails and just saying, "Look, don't fuck around with your players too much." Too I also much. really like the fact that uh, coaching and head coach staff potentially might increase. I just hope there's yeah. not a balloon effect. Um, it's Korean coaching well, staff are already very large most of the time. Yeah, I mean, this is potentially a way for. To say, say someone like LS potentially to move into a coaching world with less furor around it, because obviously there was a lot of drama in the preseason around that. So well, I thought I that, no, I thought like that this was general, the case right? anyway. Yeah. Yeah. I thought that this system was effectively kind of an unofficially how the teams already did it. Now it's just were. yeah, exactly. Just I, I, I figured yeah. this is actually kind of how it worked beforehand. Now it's just put into legislation, really. Um, like for instance, I, and in terms of like the manager thing not being the head coach, I mean that that's actually really. So a fun fact about SKT. Um, they stopped winning as much in season seven, uh, not just because Coma left, but because Carter left as well, who was their manager. Carter went off yeah, to do PUBG, yeah. and he wasn't, you know, yeah. he wasn't the head coach, he was the manager. Um, was he head coach? I thought he was yeah. still head coach and Coma was coach, and then Coma moved and that, to that's head coach that, That's effect, effectively, it's different terminology, yeah. but the same thing. So Coma was the person doing the, the strategy and stuff like that, whereas Carter was, um... Yeah, more like a manager, manager kind of himself. figure. So, so he, when he left, it was a huge thing for SKT as well. Um, so it's kind of yeah. If he came back, I wonder wonder what I wonder what would happen with that if he came back in. Just uh, if you ever hear that name again, K Car like C Carter. So yeah, do Carter. we just to kind of end this topic off because I think there's no sense in us really going too mm. in depth in this. But do we think this is something that should be integrated into other major regions? I'm not saying LPL minor maybe. regions. Mm. I think they have the player base. Um... The problem with the EU is that you also want to keep up EU... This is effectively what EU Masters does for you as well, but it basically yes. links the main team and your academy team better. But the whole... Mm -hmm. the, 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 
I kind of under I, I actually do kind of understand why the LEC is doing away with mandatory academy teams because if you have a team which is half arsing an academy team, it's taking away a slot from a team and an org. It is it might actually yeah, the ERL system for Europe is strong. The ERL is stacked, really yeah. strong, really really cool. Um, I think that they've done a really good job of also marketing the individual regions to like different language play bases. I mean, like cool. the LFL is fantastic. The LFL is insane. Yeah. Did you see their? I'm did you see their production videos? Cool. They had Vin Diesel reading out in French. Like yo, and, and that that wasn't like, that wasn't a paid that wasn't like a paid promotion thing. Like it's a gen <laughs> yeah, <laughs> genuine partnership, which is crazy. But I yeah, do, in terms of other regions and where this would work. I think literally on the LPL because again it shares some of like the coaching philosophy with the LCK mm. and a lot of coaches move back and forth. I agree. LGL I agree. does not have no, a player no, no, to do this. Was not going to at we all. We need an academy system though. first. <laughs> well, yeah, we, we, we might mention that later because that's that's a whole series yeah, of rumors and drama yeah. anyway. <laughs> but yeah, Sam, have you got anything else you'd like to add? Um, I think it's potentially really cool. I think potentially, particularly on the coaching staff, I think it's great for players wanting to get into the season and having an opportunity or more opportunity now, especially because sister teams aren't such a thing anymore. I will say I worry for lower tier teams where yeah. effectively players are just never given a chance to actually grow on stage and have a few bad games because you're out the moment. Come to the LJL. There's so many other, you, there's mean, so many other players behind you who could come we, in and take your space. I have to say, there was that one rumor floating around that there was an LJL roster that was going to take Spring off and go yes. basically sign themselves up to a Korean team. Yeah. And because there are enough Korean there, players on that team and they just say, have two imports. Imagine DFM basically saying, all right, let's get some rookies in, sack off spring I mean, and come back for summer. Yeah, it's like, we'll, we'll, we'll a, sign on to, yeah. So who's the lower tier? Else? Like sign on to like, I don't know. A freaker or something. Nongshim, a freaker for just, just yeah. for spring. Just for spring. As well, like half of their roster, you know? God damn, they're going to keep him, aren't they? <laughs> Possibility. Ah, uh, that's, that's my heart. That, that's LCK, gentlemen. Uh, let's actually go over and talk about the other minor region that is as close to us. And we almost beat them out at one point. I'm going to keep doing this meme train because all the NA fans have the opposite narrative. Um, let's talk about LCS um, mm. and more about actually the news that has been coming out that affects the wider League of Legends ecosystem. Not actually talking about the LCS because what's there to say? Um... Really? Sven's pretty. Uh, I, I hear this new academy player, Sven's pretty yeah, good. Yeah, this is OG Neil's. Never heard of him. He's pretty good. Kind of wild, right? And Crazy, like right? benching <laughs> and bringing in people. I don't really know what's mm. going on in that region half the yeah, time. Um, let's strange. quickly talk import rule because uh, it came out yesterday that um, Riot aren't going to be touching the import rule, even though NA would love them to touch it. At least not until after World was the kind of communication that I understood from reading between the lines. I'm pretty sure They're that not... even if it was changed for this split, import rule would not... Have... Well, no, maybe it would have done, but I don't think so it would have I, been... I've got... Go on. I've got some info on this, but let's maybe move on with some of the bits, and I'll clarify after you guys have done that, just sure. so you guys have finished the scene, and I'll come back to it. We can come back to import at the end if you prefer. Sure. Um... Oh, well, I can do it now. It's just, it's just like I figured we clarify everything else, and I could bring this one in. Sure. Uh, I mean... I'm, I am I don't want them to do anything with the import nope. rule. I think the import rule works completely oh. fine as it is currently. Um, I do have a slight problem, and even though we're doing it in the LJL and our super team is it, I do have a problem with too many uh, residents being on a team that aren't from the region itself. Um, I think two is, must be a minimum. I don't particularly like what, some of, uh, what we're seeing in NA uh, where we get... Four players that are not North American representing North America. Well, We're in, getting very close to LMQ territory did, here if but, people are just like, I've lived in the region for four years. It's like, well, but you're not TSM, North American what, and this well, is meant to be the North TSM's, American region? What's TSM's roster? They've got a, you know, they've got, who knows top lines? That's, you know, Korean, Korean National. Korean. And then you've got... Um, Speakers American. Speakers American, okay, yeah. So they do have one. Speaker is European. the American yeah, like, on that. Basically, like, things are like, at the end of the day, they've made the, 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 the Oceanic region. Doing it. They've made the Oceanic oh, region effectively count as North American. So they do have, they do have, you know, natives, in, in, in native rosters in, in that sense. But yeah, it just feels yeah. a little bit yeah, I mean, like, I, I, so I was asked, I was asked by, it, by someone actually. It's kind of cheating, like, but I, I don't. I, I, mean, I, I, don't I, mind I was, it. I was asked like when I, when I was um, watching some of the MSI games, and I was like, oh, so doesn't it like water down the success that you have if your rosters are not, um, you know, not, not, Thank not you. residents? Mm -hmm. And 
the thing is that, like, I, I particularly, because for me, this question comes down to basically, do I care that Arya is Korean competing in the LDL and stuff like that? And, like, there is there is that caveat, right, for me. But he started his career in the LJL. I think that's a big thing for me. I know that applies in some some different um, esports. You um, like if you start your competitive career in one region, that 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 helps. I I, do I don't think want a hundred T. I don't want ten a hundred Ts where yeah. there is no actual no, North American like, player I, from the like, region. But then I I, I also just... yeah, which which and I I do agree with that. But I also want there to be a pathway to be like, look, this person's like bled, sweat, region, and cried yeah. for this region. Um, they deserve mm. the recognition. So a person like Bjergsen or Jensen for NA, Jensen, or yeah, exactly. um, yeah, and and as as Hina's saying in chat, basically those two, and then Steel and Aria. They you know they they put in the work for this region. Yeah, they have, for IG, yeah. Like rookie, yeah, yeah, rookie, yeah, rookie, or, or Doinbi, right? Like... Doinbi, Doinbi's yeah. Korean, mm. um, but he, but you know he's 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 married married a, 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 a Chinese national, and then is also like has basically competed there for Even his entire career. Been there for career. seven years or something. Yeah, Crazy, right? easy like so that. Like, I was on his the, page yesterday, yeah. I put it this way, I wouldn't want there to be such an incentive to flood a region with effectively Korean Korean exports and Chinese exports and, and the like, that you don't get any you national You as well players. at this point for NA. <laughs> yeah, exactly, yeah, right? Like, I, I, I don't think there should now. be an incentive to to do that because I, I do think that that having that because I mean, it's one of the problems that Overwatch League had, right? In terms of like oh. London Spitfire, her entire Korean roster, and I'm like, I wouldn't they then say I was, them. They went fantastic <laughs> roster. I think that they were better than than they they they, they managed that roster better than some other Overwatch League teams in terms of like actually localizing it because they had better fan meets and stuff like that. But it still as that C9 slight thing. That That's slight just disconnect. C9 managed. Yeah, it, it's different. Like if it was like a Korean national who was already living in London, then blah blah. Because that's like how you get that regional connection, right? Because you want that connection with your players, so you can then yep. kind of have that continued story with them. But and and but I think I think it's really important that people have those opportunities, um, like a around the world, and have that ability to like integrate themselves in the new culture. Because I think that's so important with modern society. Yeah. The question is whether then that again, like with, with roster locks already in place and re import rules and stuff like that too, it, uh, it does kind of add some question marks on some regions. But like like your NA, where yeah. effectively no American players are, are really like at the top okay. of their. Top of yeah. their teams and roles, really. I mean, that's a bit of an exaggeration, yeah, but like, I, this is, I, I, you, you start questioning yeah. it, right? I, I will yeah. say there's probably two things here. So, Core JJ is one, a really good example, yeah. Yeah, Core, Core JJ, fantastic. And again, really committed to North America and still really, really good. So, yeah. that's a fantastic example. Impact as well, I would also yeah, say. Impact, to yeah, EG. it's a fair shout. Yeah. You know, these guys have really committed to this region and done really well with it. So, like, I mean, like, on this note as well, I'll say one, North America has now at least put some serious effort into revamping their academy systems mm. to make it look better. People like Karen Cosimosa, uh, that's Razzle going to Plaza, take like three Peter or Dunn. four years. Gonna, be, through, basically, right? Peter Dunn's calling it a 2023. Yes. Mm. That's when it's, but, but the problem is that's, that's going to be the way it is until... But that's just the way it's going to be. Like It's just going to take some time. And there are te teams and players coming up who look like they're going to be really special, actually. Oh, yeah. And I'm quite excited mm. for that. Um, two... This is the thing with the import rule. So a lot of where this has come from is an interview that Travis Gafford had with Chris Gre um, Greeley, who is the LCS yeah. commissioner. Um, yeah. And a couple things you have to read between the lines here, Rob. One, he, Travis specifically asked about changes, and Chris Greeley only committed to saying there will be no removal of the import rule, not that will be no changes. Two, he also shoved off to Riot Global, not Riot NA. So this is Riot Global's decision, basically saying that potentially the NA branch of Riot are at least in talks and potentially in agreement with the NA teams about looking to do some changes. But it's not down to them, it's down to Riot Global. And it's kind of passing the buck onto someone higher up to avoid the blame coming on you. Mm. And it's kind of a little bit of obfuscation. This might me be... be be me and other people being a bit cynical but and that's just the question is I, I still think there's a but there and I don't think that this conversation mm. is done No. so keep that in mind guys removal isn't the same as not being changed and two throwing this out to right global to avoid things going on to right NA when actually a lot of decisions about league are made by the individual offices anyway and there isn't yeah. really a riot well, global I, I think, there's a lot I, of I think sweeping that riot, riot, anyway yeah. is a little bit mm, i think me. i think riot does have a big issue even as a game right not just in as an esport with not really having that unified central 
presence or global presence, right? Which can start leading that to the direction. Is about which the, is the, whole, the replays, right? Which is the whole thing with the replays and a whole lot of other stuff. Because, I mean, we've been talking about this in season five, six now, before yep. then, yep. about in terms of. Oh, no, we've been talking there... about this in season four, remember, with LMQ. Like, like sure, with that, but with even LMQ, just in terms of a game, in terms of. CLG, what you would do LCK, okay, did the same. Like, like, when CLG remember, yeah. remember how, and when remember to how OGN, long right? it took to get replays. Remember, yeah, forever and ever. Oh, when, and ever, and ever. when do we actually get replays? They never work on another third what, patch. What, what, they only work on the patch they're from. Exactly. So you need to actually down. You need to have previous versions of the client installed, which is fucking oh, crazy. Just, yeah. Just, it's, yeah. So I know that Shaka has, oh. has like pre previous clients installed. I'm pretty sure to replay some files. And then, there's like, also no reason why there shouldn't just be a legacy version which just you know, works we're and talk just about integrates and it switch between. Yeah, it's because uh, when this is tech debt is what this is. Yes, yeah. yeah. let's actually um, from ten years ago. Anyway, move thank on. Thank you maybe. for that clarification, Sam. I think that's yeah. really important for our listeners mm. and for mm. all of us to be on the same kind of page with that. Um, this is not the end. We will be talking about this in Probably. the future. Trust because us. If remember, there is more yeah. information that comes out, we will cover it because it will not only yeah. affect us as a region and the OGL. But a wider scope, and it's important. Uh, yeah, you can go check probably about five episodes ago now. Okay, will be. I think it's actually in the title. One of our one of our episodes, we were talking about what the hell is happening with import rule. How does it affect the LJL? Because there is. Because if it, if it ended up becoming a global phenomenon, honestly, even if it just becomes an NA phenomenon where they remove the the import cap and stuff like that, through a various amount of arguments, we thought that the LJL would probably not survive two years after that point because of the way it would destabilize yeah. minor regions in particular, major regions, sure, whatever. But particularly the LGL. I mean, yeah. I mean that that's a PCS. I mean, I I want. I think there is a world where like major where you as you said. I think minor regions become defunct, not taking just import. defunct. Well, 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 but minor regions no longer take uh, an import slot. Basically, yeah, it would be, it would be is a bit serious and this, consideration. And this, and this is why this is why it's such a nuanced conversation in terms of why is it problematic that you know particularly a lot of Koreans are in the LGL. You know, every team has two or more Koreans on the team because we can mm. kind of see this like the shadow of the beast from that in terms of. There is actually a chance that this destabilizes the region and also ch it changes its um its kind of consumer power, right? In terms of its mon it, its marketability, it does. which destabilizes mm -hmm. the region. The LGL is already at the lower end of it, of viewership in terms of minor regions and, and monetization and stuff. It could seriously damage the region, which is why we have to touch this with like like a ten foot barge pole. There's a lot going on here beneath the, under the cover, really, but that we, which we even we don't understand because we're not involved with the league itself officially, you know. We're not. You know? Yeah, we're not internal yet. We don't have privy yeah. to that yet. information. So hey ho, yeah, it's, yeah, it's absolutely initialized yet. Um, let's actually go on to that next topic though of the pre of the replay files because obviously this was a. Uh, a recent thing, and there's all been a lot of information that has come out since then. Obviously, Mithy did an interview with Travis Gafford yet again, uh, bringing out that man. Uh, thank you, Travis, um, for actually yeah, getting scoops and content. Yeah, it's content. Uh, uh, Mithy obviously was, I would almost argue, he was a little irate um, and rather frustrated at the situation he had found himself in. He's always um, been very a bit blunt. of information. He has. Um, obviously, he is with his boys of Zven and Perk, so yep. he is very much in a happy... That's a blood trio. Yeah. <laughs> oh, that is like blood brothers almost, more than anything else. They've been through thick and thin, and uh, Mithy is not impressed that he doesn't have access to everything. Now, yeah, I listened to on Twitter and... um, the interview that Myth um, that Travis got more information from Global Esports, or rather... L, um, Riot America um, and Sam please correct me or Nymera um, if I'm wrong about this but basically my understanding was with the replay files how it's going to work is currently the teams in question only get the replay files for their exact matches they do not share those out the the commissioner was very much like if the teams want to start making them public we're not gonna stop them but we're not gonna say anything about it we're not going to do anything about it we give it to the teams we're worried that the teams might give out information um i'm gonna quickly very also just take this hot minute I don't think the reason that Riot Games wants to release that information, because imagine if you can give someone like Cloud9, who are who are partnered with Microsoft, to literally scrape random files that they can get at the moment. Imagine if they get access to the whole LCS and global esports. Guess what? The game becomes far more solved and understood far yeah. better, and Riot don't want so that. This is... That's just my hot take. 
There, yeah. so Bjorkson made a really good point on Twitter, and I completely agree. Partly because, and we're, we are going to talk about Provia as well. So again, we'll we come to that yes. later, which is also really good information. But one of the things about a broadcast, it is not there to be and like it, its primary function is not analysis. It is not an analysis thing. It's not there to be necessarily. It's not there to be primary informative. It is primary entertaining, which means and that and what and marketing. And marketing, which is again, and the entertainment is part of its marketability, and then yeah, and again, it's not like the you know the other side of it because you do need to be informative and all this other stuff. But what that means is that you have replays of big fights, and what Bjorkson was saying, and I completely agree with this because reset timings are one of the best things to analyze in league. Because one thing that we saw particularly in season nine when D two would be yep. SKT is that their reset timings and how they punished people's Baron resets were better than anyone else. They could win series without taking a Baron because they punished people's Baron resets. If there's a replay over those damn resets, you can't watch the game replays on YouTube to see what they do with the resets. You can't see what's happening. Where's the support going next? How are they setting up for the next objective? Um, there's um, yeah. limits the to what you can see on the camera, the right? Like, you, right? Like you, you, like again, you can get a lot out of the minimap. Don't get me wrong, but actually being able to see what people are doing on screen can be really helpful on that as well to yeah. an extent, right? Uh, and I, I, like again, well, the minimap, Sam, the money count maps covered if it's in replay. <laughs> yeah, true. Exactly. I mean, exactly that too. I mean, like, and even then, like, mm -hmm. if you're just looking, even when you're looking at standard play, you can only follow where the, the observer's taken you, right? Like, you can't pan over the map and say, okay, what's this guy doing here? Where's he looking? All that kind of jazz. Um, mm -hmm. And there basically just isn't a global replay database for teams to get a hold of. Um, and it particularly sort of things like, you know, it's particularly for, say, uh, like a lot of the, like LPL VODs. I don't know how available they are in general anyway for out teams. If they, I think you can go asking for them. I'm not entirely Sick sure. Could it be, though, like Travis mm. was suggesting, to there to be a repository where every replay oh, gets yeah, uploaded yeah, from a game and you can just download that replay file and then launch and, it straight uh, into any Riot client because they can just play it. They can just yeah. do it, and suddenly a Diamond 1-1 one, one trick who wants to just watch their favorite LCK or, I don't know, LPL player, yeah. and just be like, okay, how do I do everything? Pro is a bit different, but yeah. I, I, I mean, so, I would love to have that. On a similar note, so they're not in chat, so I can shout them out and completely embarrass them. There's a guy called Zero FTG who's done some stat work oh, yeah. in the UK. Um, the, you mm. know, he's actually offered to do some stuff for us too, so he's very, very kind. Um, but they... On a similar note, in terms of like the philosophy, in terms of like we need to make this information val like available, because honestly, I think it would help casters loads. I know that having stats from GOL, other places, absolutely huge. But sometimes, like you're sat there and like you'll only notice some things just because you, you you're kind of good at picking things from from um from like minimap and stuff like that. But like say for instance in the Rascal Jester V3 series when like there was all of this like level one like bot lane ward in the middle brush kind of shenanigans going on, I'm like that's really interesting. What Zero FTG is doing is trying to find ways to like scrape data and have like that publicly available for just like for any kind of match history code um so, and that kind of thing is super valuable when because they, they you know they, they asked me for some advice on how it was like being displayed and stuff i'm like dude if you can do this for a league which doesn't have gol or leaguepedia that is huge that is absurdly mm -hmm. helpful um especially if you can get that get that from custom games stuff like that but i'm, I'm not yeah custom games are in a bit of a weird spot right now because if you're by the way if you're scrimming on live servers uh, you need to Don't alt F4 before the Nexus server. ends, otherwise you can actually scrape the data. Um, so be careful with that. So, yeah. which is a it, it's a real screw over for teams that don't have tournament run. But yeah, I, I think just in terms of like, this whole ecosystem of making information available for not just teams but for broadcast too, and for and for like you were saying, solo queue people and stuff like that, it's a great Content way creators, to get engaged. Everything we would love to do some cool LGL montage stuff. Exactly, and can't. I mean like so. I mean obviously we'll we'll be talking a bit more about with some some special faces next week. But there are some people that we've you know that that we talked to or are involved with, um, and of course you know we you, you guys have seen the information the the announcements that we've made on our Twitter. We have some really intelligent people on board this split. And I can't wait to see what they would do with that kind of information. Uh, what we'd each pick up from watching those kind of odds. And that's just where we're waiting for. Hopefully that can be... Sam, anything else you want to say on replay files? I think it's been largely covered there. Honestly, I, I think it would just be a good thing to have. I think it would be a lot easier for teams to have. I, I will say I also think that teams aren't or haven't historically been the best at pursuing some of this stuff like you can get replay files it's just really hard I think, work i think that's uh, fair um but uh, it's, and, it's it's the uh, question of should the yeah. teams be doing the question of or matches, should riot Sam? be making it you, you can't available? Get, yeah no getting pro, pro match replays i'm pretty sure you can't can you i thought you could request from riot to get certain uh, so only the teams in question 
So if Cloud9 ah, face up against right. TSM, only Cloud9 and TSM mm, yeah. can request the files. They're not given them apparently just by default. They have to request yeah. them. Uh, anyway, it's dumb. It needs to be, it, it, but only be those two easier. teams get yeah. it. It should be a minimum so, yes. every team, if anything. Uh, yeah, public, exactly. But. And I, so, so I know I know there are certain options available to teams, but it's a lot of work and it's not particularly easy and it's very frustrating. And that just seems stupid to me when there's a lot more that could be happening that would make teams significantly better. So and at the end of the it. day, no team's going to be the first team to re to give all their replays out because then you're just putting yourself down and easier for other uh, coaches and staff to uh, scout you so it, it's kind of a catch-22 yeah let's uh skip the sec uh, the third one that i've gone because i think sure. it, um with our co current conversation it's more relevant pro view gentlemen there is going to be a free pro view and now um a seven dollars a month six dollars a month uh, oh, paid version uh ProView is getting an upgrade in the LCS, and hopefully this is a sign of things to come international. Uh, I mean, ProView has been in a weird place over the last year, because it's just not really existed unless you're in the LPL or LCK, uh, and you have to be in those regions as well. That's a whole nother thing in and of itself that mm, I don't, don't like. Me don't like that the fact the region only ProView, but then people in those regions can come over with a VPN and get these regions. I Hmm. Things. Pro view, though, gentlemen. What's your thoughts? Yeah. Great. Really, really good. I, really I'm so stuff. sad to have it back. And the fact yeah, you like, can get certain amounts of free as well, I think is really cool. Like, yeah. you get what, two rolls for just free? teasing it? <laughs> yeah. Two rolls. Like, like they, genuinely, they, they pick, jungle right? pro view, guys. Two streams. Two streams. Right. Two streams. Two streams. So yeah. I, think, I think it's basically Sorry, one, one, one on each team for free. Ah, um, I see. Okay. So, yeah, get jungle. Every time, like what pathing yeah. to jungle so, and what's so, going yeah, on the map. So cool. You know, in chat is saying that actually there are, there are some ways to, to 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 get around that. But honestly, I don't have the I, I I'm not educated enough to talk about that right now. So maybe that's a thing to do between podcast episodes. Um, yes. Yeah. Because timeliness but, is a thing right now, and, and probably putting it out, especially depending on the. <laughs> gray space of legality i suspect sure, you might whatever. get into to sneak around the great firewall of china might be uh worth talking about not on a podcast sure. which may or may not get us in trouble but no so. like <laughs> no 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 it's that apparently it's legal so um i think the thing for me is though so again like i said i've been jumping into a lot more scrims again recently and um the way i've found i learn the most from from well view spectating any match is watching any one I, watching multiple perspectives like just doesn't work it for me because like sometimes if i'm looking at like looking for like how is support linking up a jungle i'll watch both of them but most of them i'm sat on one person's perspective and i'm like okay what is what are you doing from this tier time period in regards to this object and the other thing watching someone pro view rather than like having like again like your main broadcast being switching between loads of different things it's really important um because yeah just to focus on one person if you're looking at analytically and try and get the most you can out of one person's perspective rather than kind of spread it spreading your attention so pro view for me very very important same kind of thing as the replay files very good for the general learning of the game and the and player base and overall, it's just more access. I love the fact that they're doing a free into paid model. It's a very consumer friendly uh, service where it's like, hey, if you're interested in trying to do this, here's the first place that you can learn about it into, hey, there is this paid version. It has mini map experts. You can get a bunch of stuff. You get far more data just given naturally if you pay for it. But you, it's a very, it's a very smart way. And I actually want to praise lcs on this one um the fact that they said it there's been a year in the making for this i can feel like there's been some conscious thought and effort and uh hopefully we'll get to see more of this one day we'll get ljl pro view gentlemen one day just uh day. gotta wait for that one uh let's talk about the practice tool very briefly as that has been something that has come up a tiny bit obviously practice tool or sandbox mode is in uh the same state it's been for several years now and uh People are like, hey, this isn't that? good for actually practicing anymore. Uh, it was fine for the five minutes, but uh, that was five Un minutes, five years ago. Unless you're a content creator who's been hiding the way to hack multiple people into it a custom game. <laughs> Six people in league wide. No, no way. Mm. Uh, but yeah, uh, practice tool has been kind of a dumpster fire. Uh, gentlemen, what's your thoughts on the practice tool at this moment in time? It's and... still useful, but it's just, again, kind of, it's just teasing the better functionality that we yeah. all really want. Like... No, that's exactly it. Like, it, it is a halfway house that mm. basically doesn't do 
I, I think at this point in some ways, like it, it's useful. You can do tests. You can do like item tests, all that kind of jazz, which is quite convenient. You can just, like mm. stick. You can basically reset jungle and just clear and clear and clear, which is really nice. All that kind of job is is good there. stuff. They but, have but more like convenient than in. just creating a normal game yeah. and just. Uh, and well, play. exactly. But I, but I will say, like actually, the inability to basically bring people in to test with them or test combos with them mm. is a big deal, particularly for pro, where I think one of the biggest deals that uh, pros are dealing with at the minute is burnout. Like, Players burn out really, really, really fast. You need Basically more efficient because practice. They, yeah. Because practice point. is so is so inefficient. Because you're in a solo queue game, maybe one out of two is useful at a stretch. You get to play a champion into a matchup with a team that's kind of working, uh, that is constructive to you in the current meta. Uh, and of course, there are some base fundamental things you get out of it, like, you know, playing lane and playing the map and all that kind of jazz. But, you know, actually, um, you don't get to just go in and say, okay, I need to grind 20 games of Jace top. Unless you're Tyler versus, one, yeah, yeah, exactly. Versus particular matchups, right? Yeah, uh, yeah and I can and do and that. Even actually, a and lot I can of do team, that. A lot of teams scrim environments are not most. That's not what you've got to do in that. Exactly, no. because because actually, I mean, like there are you know there are ways to be more time efficient where you just do the first fifteen minutes, just speed scrim, mm -hmm. fifteen minutes, fifteen minutes, fifteen minutes, just like a couple of minute breaks in between them, talk about what what happened, and just focus on that part of the game because that's such a yep. big part of pro game anyway. But like yep. getting that kind of environment is kind of rough in the West, from what I've heard. Um, I mean, some yep. teams will, will have that, um, but but yeah, I mean, having the framework oh, the... there, like you've been saying, would would seriously help um, not just the players but also the coaches too, because coach burnout is a huge thing as well. Yeah, and I mean, honestly, it, it, if you just make the comparison between, I I've, I love making the comparison between traditional sports and esports with the idea of if you're a CS:GO player, you can load up Aim Labs and you can just practice shooting and uh, clicking heads. heads yeah yep. you can Absolutely. also go into valorant and you want to practice your combo you want to practice the strats where you're going to put your hawkeye over you're going to do x y and z mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. you can do all this you can do your flashback and clangs you can actually then go off and go into a third camera and just go like okay where was the line no that didn't work da, da, da. right this is how players get better on on when they want to do it go in environment and just kind of throw shit at the wall and see what works we don't have that in league uh, you can't just pitch the same pitch 50 times and try and get your throwing arm better like traditional or sports. Or practice free throws for basketball or three points. Yeah, right. Yeah. We don't have that and we're the number one esport. And I'm a little bit worried that other like... esport games already have this. I mean, for yeah. God's sake, the game that this was fucking based on, Warcraft 3, you could fucking but, but, do but, but, this! But one, of the, and what, but one of the big problems for League is that obviously you can't develop your own shit for it. Uh, like, there's the, You can't develop your own like, tools. Unlike Dota. Unlike Dota or anything on our, on your Epic Store or, or anything on on mm -hmm. yeah on on Steam or whatever, you you can't yeah. develop things for League. In fact, actually, it's very frowned upon by Riot to develop a lot of your own shit in League. You've seen the fan um, projects that they closed down. Exactly. Yeah. Right. I mean, and, and sure, there are reasons for that. Again, they they, they keep a tight tight leash on their Right. Z is out there. Sure. <laughs> um. But yeah, I think I think that's a big thing too. I I act, and and again, like I think. Uh, one of the reasons we're not seeing more stuff like the replay files and, and um, your practice store and stuff like that is basically they're worried about their time efficiency of developing. Even though they're a huge company, we haven't seen them return to PvE modes, which were largely well regarded from Odyssey and Star Guardian event, and of course the uh, the project one as well, Project Overdrive. We haven't seen them return for that for four years now? Something like that? A long like that. time. Long time. It's been a yeah. while. Yeah. And I think a lot of yeah. that's because I think they've also split their focus between a lot of things like like your Valorant, like your Project L, um, like uh, which is like Wild Rift too, which is great. And again, yeah. much for them, for, for them, point. much more marketable products. Going to get a lot more because they're tapping into a completely new base rather than trying to capitalize on their existing base, which is mm. already doing very well for them. I think honestly, from Riot's point of view. I don't really give too much of a damn because they're already doing so much within the PC gaming market that they don't really care for. Um, really expanding in that space on their own intellectual property. They'd rather make something new, make a make a quick buck. Yeah, up. in some ways, like I get it. It's a business, all that kind of jazz. I yeah. do think it's worth potentially the esports department of Riot basically going. Look, we're going to fund a developer to come and do something for us on this, just to outsource it, get it done that way. I think because I think it would be seriously helpful, and I think it would seriously help with longevity of pros and teams uh, yeah, and just healthier lifestyles. I don't. Know what... I don't 
think it's particularly healthy to be grinding 11 hours a day right now. I don't think no, that's a way. I, I, I agree at least. Like, it gets that. you better at league, but I don't think it's sustainable. And there's a reason people like Uzi have retired so young in a lot of, in, a, in the grand scheme of life that and one, other I think, titles. That, I, think I mean, that like, one, his arms are screwed. His, I think his, his eating habits that's are screwed. All, you know, that, that, that's true. I think that's partly, I think that's more lifestyle-y stuff rather than sure, the But that's what I'm itself. talking about. Like, I think this stuff affects your lifestyle, right? Like, no, if I you agree. have to grind, I, it, doesn't, it doesn't help. I also think that a lot of... Um, there is an entirely avoidable health epidemic in terms of RSA injuries and stuff like that for oh, sports, well, which is we're, we're 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 skirting it right now. We're skirting. Yeah, it. but I mean, like, how? Like, I don't think however many wrist exercises you do, grinding for fifteen hours a day yeah. with three hours of sleep, whatever exercises you do, you're still going to get RSA hmm. at that I, point eventually. I think there's there's a lot. Anyway. I think honestly, when it comes to the term of a practice tool, I think we would love to see development be done um, and more freedom around it, or the ability to do more. Because I think it's it's pretty sad that there isn't the ability to do this. Um, I don't know honestly if there's a developer that's trying to do a aim lab esque thing for League of Legends, but I also don't think there's much of a reason for someone to develop that tool because it's probably only going to be yeah, used by and... a few people, and it's not like you can just throw it and be like uh... any FPS we can just implode settings like you can't it's league and that's it yeah so, and the, pro the problem yeah. is like to, re to retain the look and feel of league and then also make a tool for it whilst doing that whilst also doing something which is actually useful for it it's so much work and doesn't get on their copyright like yeah exactly screwed. you you can't do that with you can't do that with a reasonable time span and and then low budget you can't have to wait and see. Hopefully, um, more things will be coming because uh, it's been a few years since we've really had a big update for that. And uh, guess what? Even champions like Diego are still broken. Uh, yeah, uh, that's good to know. Um, so that's on? been a lot. That's been a lot, gentlemen. Uh, let's actually reach the end of this podcast because I think we've uh, we've gone on a bit longer on these. Sure. We have more topics. to talk about than I thought we would actually. <laughs> Turns I mean, out not to. That... When we've been practicing this for a year and a half, just sat in a call talk, making stuff up on the fly. We oh actually boy, get okay yeah. Uh, and I believe um, we're working up to a four o'clock time constraint, yeah. if I remember yeah. rightly, due to what That's I previously right. heard. So yes, yes we're going we're gonna to cover... I'm on. Because <laughs> Sam and I are going to plug yeah. ourselves for a thing later. We'll do that later. <laughs> okay, Ooh. we'll do it at the end. Yeah. We'll do it at the end. Um, but we're going to be covering now what's happening with the LGL U, and then maybe if we've got two seconds of time, we'll talk about summer stuff. But sure, uh, sure. let's talk about LGL OU. Um, so first things first, uh, let's recap how spring ended for us internally, not from what the people saw, gentlemen, how spring ended for us. Who wants to take this? Do you want me to take it? I'll start it. Sure. Or... Oh, sure. All Close right. Off. So, ladies and gentlemen, we ended off uh, with pretty much the biggest bang the LJLOU has ever had with our finals coverage. Um, obviously, I was... Uh, Ill, yeah, but was... there was a lot of planning and everything else that we had all done yeah. for this. There was a lot of ideas, and this has kind of put us in a perpetual motion state because we tried the, a lot of stuff out going through spring, and a lot of stuff was working and was really positive. Um, you might have heard someone like Reed. We've mentioned a hell of a lot on our broadcast. Thank you to Reed, our constant producer. Not producing this, that's Nymera, but uh, hello. Reed has uh, helped a lot with uh, producing and kind of just elevating the product. Patrick also helped out with that at finals and we've been growing and growing. Um, and we ended with a bang. And honestly, for us, it was like, well, we brought in Maple. We brought in Joshi. Everything's kind of working out. Guys, this, this looks like it's something we could keep doing. Yeah, and like, so um, we've said as much to a lot of people over our break but at the end of spring. We've done this for a year and a half now. Um, we can see the limit of what us three together can do, even with occasional help coming in. And that occasional help has helped lift burdens. And we're thinking for summer, hey, actually, if we want to make something more of this, we have to start upping the amount of people involved. So we started talking about that. We did. So the plan that we set out um, is a lofty one. But I think it's fair that we say the ultimate plan is uh, we want to become the gold standard for amateur broadcast and coverage of a minor region or just amateur coverage full stop. Um, so, yes, we are going to be kind of throwing ourselves like our ultimate goal is to rival what the EU Masters puts on. 
as that's mm -hmm. kind of the current standard i'd say the challenger uprising stuff is also pretty high up there obviously um our big sister league that has been covering uh, uh, for a bit longer than us obviously vcs english obviously is uh yeah, that, yeah, and yeah. that's where we want to kind of elevate and then exceed and kind of be like hey catch up with us yeah no there's there's uh yeah um friendly competition exactly i mean well i mean at the end of the day they've, they've helped us a lot we've we've we'd like to think that we've we've helped them a bit too at, at points but you know at the end of the day there is a point of pride for us and we want to be good at our craft we want to be good at yeah. our craft and what we uh what we need to do that is is more permanent help so we we yep. set on a mission to be like okay how do we do that as a group of three guys who talk through facebook messenger more often than not how do we do we need that? real life communication. So we um, <laughs> what's, what's yeah. this? What's this socializing thing? I forgot yeah. how to do the whole greeting. Like, people, you know, we, we we like to think that you guys agree, but we're pretty good at what we do now individually in terms of if we're on Relatively camera. Speaking. We can we can we you know the actual casting of games and hosting outside of it is something that we do well. We need to make sure that we have all the other things pinned down outside of it because trying to do multiple things at once is the really difficult part. Trying to produce and also cast the same yeah. is really difficult. Mm -hmm. So that's when, if anyone's been following on Twitter and, and obviously on our podcast too, we said. We're looking for help. Um, we want you, you know, the, the collective out there to come to come help us. Um, so we sent out a Google form and we probably thought we'd get like five or six responses. Um, we got 50. Yeah. Plus. 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 Yeah. <laughs> um, so <Jinx. laughs> we, we really overshot what we thought. And then we thought, oh, bloody hell, we need to take this seriously. This isn't something yeah, that we much. can just yeah, like much. throw off um so we did a whole week of actually interviewing everyone we talked to absolutely mm -hmm. everyone that that signed up that that was available was a lot of interviews and yeah um we 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 got through it and we had some stunning people apply for us oh my there were some very difficult decisions made of course a lot of it was about availability just thinking about if you are actually around to help us the amount that we need. Yeah, exactly. Can, can you cast games on Saturday, please? Yeah. And we had some incredible, uh, yeah, an incredible level of talent. Some people are like, oh, bugger, this is going to be challenging me. I'm, I thought I was pretty good. There are some very good people. Yeah, there. right. Very um, frustrating. You know, we went through a good 40, 45 interviews, and I think we've put together a really good team for the summer splits. So we hope you really enjoy watching the broadcast. With new staff coming out, we will be introducing all of our casters next week on this episode. Well, next episode of the yeah, podcast next episode. on the, this on show. this podcast on this show. Yes. yes, that's where I was going with that sentence. Um, this episode right now in three right minutes now. flat because we have no time left. <laughs> yeah, we'll give them a big one. Uh, so we're gonna. Uh, they're gonna be coming in. It's for just me segment. with different wigs on. That's all it is. <laughs> Say. You've always got the twisted sister. Wait, hang on, hang on, where is it? It's 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 here. It's, 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 it's right here. Like, this is this is the eighties hair I have occasionally for when I need to do like glam speakable rock costumes. things. Glam rock, yes. Um, glam, I, I, glam rock gigs. It's occasionally necessary. So we've got a hair we'll be having... that off. <laughs> So we'll be having them come in for the podcast. They'll be coming in for uh, segments each. Uh, one of them is going to be pre-recorded because um, already availability. Um, as such, because of that, uh, the show is in, is going to be um, getting a new facelift. I'm not going mm. to tease too much about that, but I'm just saying a facelift um, in both. Uh, We're going under the graphic design surgeon. Graphic design and in theoretically audio wise and transitions oh, yeah. and a bunch of other stuff. We're so very excited to see how that's all going to be turning out over the next uh, week and a half to two weeks. Uh, before you're asking, when is when is LGL starting? We don't fucking know either. We so, uh, second, third week of June. Yeah, 12th in... or 19th is um, our current soft Probably. start dates. Probably. Um, Probably. But that's us speculating. We don't have any other thing. If we could announce it right now, we would we love don't... to, but hey. Um, but we also, not only are we having new faces to join us our lovely mugs um we've got a few back-end people we've got um graphic designer we've got um an administrator we've got new moderation team we've got an italian we've got an italian stallion an italian stallion in fact he's in ch he's in chat right now with, with a very is. important little one that's normally nearby for them oh. that goes meow um Apparently, we've got a start date according to said Italian stallion. Might be Wait, the twenty. What? Oh, don't you dare do that. Okay, he's, he's joking. I trusted you. We Reed. no longer have an Italian. 
We no longer yeah. have an Italian. <laughs> no, no, we do have an Italian. I can't be losing this Italian. No, you guys might be trying to VO him on, but I need him. We ain't getting rid of him that much. Um, <laughs> so yes, yeah, so there's going to be a lot of stuff changing. Um, we are hopeful that summer will be not only the best LJL OU product that we have ever put out, but um, other parts of content will be following along with it, and that honestly we can kind of look at the end of this summer and be like, damn, this is what a premium product looks like. And we'll have to wait and see how that goes. Obviously, you can imagine the reason we're doing this stuff is for other reasons as well. I'll let you all think of those reasons because it's pretty fucking obvious if you think about it. I want it. a job. Yeah. We'd That'd like nice. to get paid, <laughs> Um, Gentlemen, we've only got a few minutes left, so we're going to have to kind of rally through this. Uh, looking towards summer um, is going to be our next week's podcast episode for the LJL, but is there anything you'd like to tell the people out there? Wear a Ooh. mask, get vaccinated. That wasn't kind of the... Yeah, yes. yes that as well, though, very important, yeah. <laughs> um, I was more thinking about actual LJL summer initialize, <laughs> but uh, yeah, sure, I mean... why not? I think that there are now a lot more eyes on this region than there would have been before yes. that MSI performance. Um, so we're going to have to step up our storytelling, get people up to speed as they come in for the new split. It's uh, a burden on us, but one that we bear all too willingly. Um, for those of you who are going to be watching, if you're trying to catch up uh, with this summer split, we really hope that uh, we can we can do it justice. Yeah, I mean, like, to be more serious, um, we have done a pretty good show without a lot of bells and whistles uh, with just the three of us. I'm hoping it's gonna be fucking jingle that come summer, summer. <laughs> we're going to have some bells and whistles. And I'm pretty excited to have some bells and whistles. Uh, you know, it needs more cowbell is the answer it to does. every performance ever. And that's what we're adding in a graphical sense. And in just a talent sense as well. We're, yeah. all get, we're getting cowbells, we're getting yeah. kazoos, we're getting the, uh, the it, Final Fantasy well, composer thing that uh, Nymera has, I think. The, oh, yeah, the, yeah, the yeah, 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 yeah. He's yeah. coming in. Yeah, he's a friend Everything. Of us. Everything. Um, yeah, I completely agree with you, Sam, on that. that bells and whistles with the more cowbell. Um, and hopefully we can do it justice. Uh, very quickly, gentlemen, we have got some quick fire questions that have been asked gotcha. to us in the LGL Discord. Ladies and gentlemen out there, if you have any questions for us, our LGL Discord is out there for any of our lovely people in Twitch chat. We're going to be going through a quick fire round here for the questions because, hey, this is somewhat kind of coming back to the podcast and also um, the questions we got asked because we're not looking towards summer were uh, a little bit more fun. So, uh, EX Kirby asked, how many people are role swapping to jungle? No one. I'm Move gonna... on. No one. Uh... <laughs> as far as we know. Stardust asks, how many coaches are moving to support? There's always a possibility. Thank you, Kazu. Yeah, Kazu, basically a gang inset, despite no him supposedly being... <laughs> Ka uh, Kazu, yeah, maybe, we'll find out. Kirby asks, how many junglers are moving to coach? No one, move None. on. None. <laughs> move on. Uh, Lucian... Uh, Lu 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 what? The what? Uh, how many junglers are Koreans? A lot. Uh, go on. look that on the here once the rosters are fully announced. Uh, Quite a few. Most of our junglers are Koreans, actually. Wait, we've Most got Hatch. Who, who, uh, who uh, isn't? Hatch, Hatch, Hatch and Hatcher um, and um, Hoglet. No, Hoglet. No, he's Korean. Oh, Hoglet Korean? Ah, oh, he is, isn't he? He's the only Korean. Okay, never mind. Yeah. Hog yeah. Hatch and Hatcher, Hatcher. Possibly the That's only it. one right That's now. It. Yeah, legit. Um, when will uh, Quincy asks, when will Rafe, uh, when will Faker retire? I hope never, but. I don't know, man. When T1's with the inevitable downhill. heat death of the universe, <laughs> um, honest answer: potentially military service might do him in. Yeah, that so maybe like one or two years. But he also yeah. might get special. Ex um, you need to win the Asian Games for that. It depends if if a certain bill goes mm. through the Korean um, Korean Senate. I thought the first time it got read, it got shut down. So I'm not sure about that. And then if he ends up winning an Asian Games, yeah, true. Um, TSM Utapon when? Never. Fuck you. Never. Uh, we need him to stay because actually I did a very long really thing about is. this, and I Don't recently leave. believe Utapon is the longest um, tenured player to not take a break now that Faker yeah. and Cyrus have Yeah, no, that, that, I think that was the case ever. Well, remember Faker was subbed out in season five for Easy Hoon. Yeah, so actually he's been that player for a while because the only other person would have been Cyrus up until season eight when he started getting subbed out Ramino. So actually, he's been the longest tenured player in the world for three years at this point. <laughs> Without yeah, in terms of like consistent play, yeah. consistent play, he has yeah. played every so, single game. Ridiculous. So that's why Quincy never 
Never, never, never. Yes, I if, hope so. Uh, Chimo, uh, hello, Chimo. Uh, actually, asks us Hi. if the LGL teams were Dragon Ball characters, who would they be, gentlemen? We this is an actual good question. Finally, um, I can't okay, believe now, it this long. This so, one okay. is an important one, and this one. So, so DFM and V three are the easy ones. Let me tell you why. DFM are Goku, the original yep. hero. They are the. This is what the LGL is based around. V three are Gohan. They were yep. the team that was meant to, in the original script of things, take over from DFM. Be the team which everyone wanted to be the sequel to it. And then people decided they want DFM better, so they just went back to Goku. Yep. Yeah. So to get to uh, V3 is Gohan, DFM is Goku. I, agree. I potentially put Rascal Jesters in as Vegeta, as the main rival. Oh, they've right. always been the rivals. That's a good point. Always have been. Mm, for a long good. time. And, then I, and the thing is, they fell away for a while. But they're kind of coming back up. They've got they've got that next Super Saiyan level. So I think I think that's the option. And then uh, Sengoku will probably sell because like they started off as like imperfect cell and then they had a they had a blank. Oh no, they oh. were perfect cell. Remember when they had Perian and blank? And then, yeah. that's the thing. So, so they Yutori. were like they were like they were like little insect uh, cell and then like it hit twenty twenty. Like oh shit, they've leveled up. And and then twenty twenty one happened. They got beat back into their previous forms. So yep. Although they're starting to build back uh, up. Starting to build back up. Mm. Going through all these so iterations. Crest Gaming Act was uh, Crest Gaming Act for a period of time was Broly. Um, I yeah. would still say they were when they had Arya and yeah. Gango. Now that they haven't, they're not really Broly anymore. So uh, Who, who's Krillin? Uh, for me, oh, Krillin, for me, Krillin Axis, or Axis. Right? I think Krillin yeah. or Axis because they still just randomly die. They've like, got heart. They've got heart, but but this is the thing, right? Krillin actually ends up in the Dragon Ball. For, for those of you who are not like familiar with Dragon Ball, and that's gonna be a weird section for you in general. Krillin is like the actual strongest, actual still human character. Everyone else a freaking Scion or an alien of uh, like it's not a, a Scion or a mm. or an alien of some other description. Krillin is actually the strongest of like the actual mortals left on this plane. He still has the Destructo disc, which is actually surprisingly OP. It damages Margin Boo for God's sake. Like this, this it actually does some pretty decent job. But like we like so, we like them because he's got character, he's got a heart, but he's still. Bit. So but that's my my Dragon Ball is a little limited. At so this I'm going to say Frieza is mm. SoftBank Hawks because mm. Axis beat the Hawk. The Hawks. I would have said that the Hawks were Yamcha. <laughs> <laughs> or maybe Burning Core okay. or Yamcha because I was like, going to put Burning Core as Yamcha. Yeah, okay. maybe because like oh he's just dead and we actually hadn't thought about him for a while. And the Hawks have been <laughs> okay. Uh, the Hawks scraped into play. Yeah, exactly. Sand. But they made they it into real play. scraped like, but, in. That's why I say they that made freezer. it. Maybe, they maybe, made maybe, it into maybe, play. Maybe <laughs> the Hawks are Android 18 because the people, pe the reason people think about it is because they look good. Do people like the Hawks? Do people like 18. Oh, there's Corporal, and I like Corporal. That's true. And like, Ash then there's, there's some... maybe, got, maybe we like Alpha Men. <laughs> there's a lot of money there. Who's the? Who's the, they're like the? No, like, you can't the even Hawks and Mr. Satan. They the don't Hawks have some money, Mr. Right? Like oh, you that's right. Yes, yes, we did this. That's right. We talked yeah. about this. The Hawks of <sighs> Mr. Satan. Oh, for that's... God's sake. Yeah. Okay. Hang that on, wait, is his actual name Mr. Satan? So I don't think I don't know Dragon Ball. He's got a different name. Is it S E I or is it S A T? No, it's Satan like the devil. What? Why? Dragon Ball. That's his actual Cause, cause, cause translation. Because he's the world's greatest well. human. It's, 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 it's like Miss he's, Lucy. He, Fair, he's the, like. he's the martial arts <laughs> champion of the world. Put some respect yeah. on that name. <laughs> Except he never fights Goku or anybody else. Anyway, um, what do you mean? didn't need to. Let's Gone. let's continue moving on. We've given a few of the ideas. The rest of you out there oh. can figure out the rest of your uh, ideas. Uh, top five handsome player. Um, uh, Aria, 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 Aria. I have there to say, Sa go. Saros has very angular play. So I'm a fan of Saros S and Evie. Saros is... Dash is a fair shout, possibly. Corporal's cute. Wasn't, okay. I wasn't going to actually start doing anything because I don't want to get biased okay. or... I, I, <laughs> like, I'm trying, trying, to, trying to think this through. Um, yeah, I'll do. do oh, the the got three thumbs there. up is, just, is, is some serious Chad moves. So that, that's got to give him some points. Uh, oh, like we took him to tell like Steel's glasses. Here. They're nice. Mm, yeah, they're nice, they're nice, they're nice. No, uh, oh, yeah. Axis is the best logo as well, so... True. Uh, I'm just, every time I think of Mr. Weeble's uh, Narwhal song, and that kind of puts me in a particular mindset. Ram Ramane like, Ramane's, oh, got cool, the, cool. Ramane's got the emo hair going on, I can, I can dig that. That's true. I like his hair. There we go, cool. There's that, some names okay. in there, move on. <laughs> Will DFM bomb out in playoffs? No. Please no. From Reed, no. Um, Stardust asks, how many players... Uh, have wife buff. Um, um, Hashimoto has a kid. Two... Samuel Cameron's died. So has it? It's fine on uh, OBS. Oh, let me let me refresh it then. 
Um, so Hatcha Mecha Dash, uh, no, Tussle. Um, Appenman does. He's got a kid buff as well, doesn't he? Yeah, yeah. Hatcha Mecha and Appenman have kid buffs, although debuffs, maybe, who knows? Looking after a young kid is uh, difficult. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Tussle is. That's why um, Tussle struggled a lot this split as well. He's been. Uh, mm. He's been dealing with new kid syndrome as well, I think. Which is great um, for them, but not so great for their hard, play. Yeah. <laughs> I'm actually not uh, sure on that one. We don't have too much time. Things. I don't... Okay, move on. But like, there I we go. We've given you kid yeah, buffs. close enough. I just quickly went through, and I don't actually think many of the players are also married or anything else like yeah. that. So, uh, yeah, it's more of the coaching stuff, typically. Cool. Uh, so, yeah. right. uh, quick quick information. Uh, DFM versus GAM predictions. GAM probably beat DFM. I'd say it's like 3-1, 3-2, GAM. Like, they're, they're, yeah. like in, yeah, a best of five, in a best of five, DFM take one or two games. Um, I think it's three two. There, there is there is a chance actually that it ends up being well. I mean, they do have uh, Gum. Gum still has um Kiara, right? He's really solid. I think that Abby wouldn't get like the leads he could get over a lot of other people with that. I think that with I think with Gang back in the roster, actually they it's could just explode through bot lane. This yes. is actually one of the, with their bot lane back. Mm -hmm. I think DFM could win through that. Um, I would love we'll to see Kati Car see. versus Arya. It's going to be such a it fun would be match great. Right? Um, uh, I think that yeah, Levi I could could roll over Steel though. I, I think Steel really is smart good. enough. Um, so what I will say is, I think Steel is more than good enough to um, not be, not be taken out of the game. I just don't. He's just not the same necessarily. The player who DFM make like the superstar, if you know what I mean. He's really yeah, good. DFM at, like, probably does still scrim guy. And, and I think and I think he's and I think he's smart enough to like basically you know like weather the storm. But there is a world where Levy just goes, yep. Yeah. Oh, oh, not Levy. Levi. Levi. Sorry, I'm so used to thinking Japanese phrasing. Um, just like here's my Carthus. Deal yeah. with this. I think things are like just, I think so. Bad. I think the, the problem that DFM would have is that they're normally used to winning through solo lanes and just really strong lighting through them. They wouldn't get that versus Garm because they're strong individual players. Not, no. um, I think that if Garm scuff their early fights and let DFM get to a mid game team fighting kind of team, I think DFM win actually. I think that they could get blown out in the early game by Garm. Um, anyway, I interesting mean, I question. Think, I think much the VCS larger. Is also, yeah, but I, I mean, it, it covers a much larger thing yeah. of the VCS. Versus LJL and everything else. Hopefully, uh, VCS versus LJL called when? Uh, what this on Summoner's Rift or what? We we playing card games on motorcycles? Then I take myself <laughs> as the favorite here. Um, uh, one, when we won Ari uh, tournament, I think we win that one. Ooh, I think I think we got that one. Why as did well. you lose the one v one Ari tournament? I have oh, to say, I'm be... typically I have had a really bad I've track record of one v ones. Although I did win one tournament and win a skin by just playing Grasp, Exhaust, Heal, Caitlyn. And just like completely we did okay yeah. at the uh, XL thing. That All right, we went to, I remember we did okay. Okay, yeah, we, uh, well, um, let's 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 move on from this horrific concept. Well, actually, to, get away from to move on is statement. to round up, Samuel. So right, then. that is actually is the end of the podcast, as we have hinted towards in the uh, in, uh, multiple times throughout this podcast. So you can. Look forward to next week's podcast where we'll be talking about all things summer. Hopefully, we'll actually have some roster locks. That's another reason why we oh, actually haven't announced anything because we don't know what the f is. Hopefully, we'll have some rosters for you. Hopefully, we'll have some times and dates and everything. We can introduce all of our new lovely cast and team and everything else. Um, but that's it. As always, you can find this podcast on all audio streaming platforms. Nymera, what do we want to do on YouTube? Like, comment, and subscribe. Support hey! us in all the ways that you can. Follow us on Twitter. Retweet our stuff. Like things. I don't care. Just interact with us. Because if you want us to succeed, then we do need a bit of that sugar. Oh, I do yeah. care. Do and what that. would I like them to do on Apple iTunes podcast initialize? What you would I do... like people to do? Well, the first thing you need to do is listen. It's important. Yeah. And if you can't do and even once you've done that, it's very important. Or before you've done it even, that five-star rating. And importantly, leaves a bit of a comment. Get that engagement up. Show yeah, people. Yeah, come on on our YouTube videos. Sub work. Yeah. Day. All the algorithm comments. Maybe we maybe we should start doing like a highlighted comment of the week to start improving that. Uh, maybe, uh, maybe. Who knows? Anyway, uh, with that all set, gentlemen, the OU is back and maybe back, better baby. than ever. Any last things you'd like to say to end this podcast out? Nymera first. Yeah, catch me in like an hour on the UKL stream. It's a uh, Twitch TV oh, yeah. forward slash the UKL. Sam's casting tonight. I'm actually on the pre-show desk with some people who have to try and contain my stupid references. Uh, yeah. So yes, yeah, first, first, uh, yeah, because the summer split's starting over there as well. It's the local UK scene. It's like two steps below the NLC. Uh, Reed's hmm. actually going to be there too. Oh wait, Reed, I'll see you in a bit then. Reed, cool. Uh, yeah, so I... yeah, come, 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 uh -huh. see us over there. Support us in our other, uh, other work as well.
I don't know. I'll, I'll be up. I'll be on from 8 p.m. I'm casting with a guy called Annie Far, who is an LEC caster, Portuguese LEC caster, but it's LEC caster. So some quality talent on the desk. So come and join us. Looking forward to it. Thank you, everybody, for listening and/or watching, and we'll see you all very, very soon.